When using tools of any kind, be sure to read and understand the manufacturer's instructions and safety precautions. Be sure to use safety glasses and work in a well-ventilated area. In any event, the producer of this video takes no responsibility for your safety if you should attempt to build your own prop. A detailed bill of material will be made available with this video. The majority of the materials I used with this project came from the scrap pile. The thickness of the plywood isn't critical, but I recommend at least one half inch thickness. Basic shop tools should be enough to complete this project. I purposely designed the templates to minimize the need for difficult cuts. The two sides of the claw are identical. By stacking two pieces of plywood, both sides can be cut at the same time. To align the template to the raw stock, fold the template along the bottom line as shown. Glue the template to the raw stock. To keep the pieces aligned while cutting, insert two screws. Extend the lines of the template to the edges of the plywood. This will make it easier to align the saw blade when cutting out the pieces. Use a miter or other straight cutting saw to cut out as much of the claw as possible. At some point the only thing left are curved cuts. Use a jigsaw or similar to make these. Here's what you should end up with. Two sides and a thumb and a scrap that's not shown. The base of the claw is a six inch diameter disc. Use a compass to mark the plywood. Cut the base from the plywood. Here's what we have so far. Two sides, a thumb, and the base. The thumb is held to the claw with a quarter inch bolt. Drill a quarter inch hole in the thumb where marked. The front and back of the claw are made from one inch thick dimension lumber. Measure the inside dimensions of the claws and cut the lumber to length. The front and back pieces will need to be beveled to prevent them from sticking up. A table saw works best for cutting the bevel. Here's the front after the bevel's been cut. The body of the claw is held together with screws through the side. Mark the sides for pilot holes. Drill 1 8 inch pilot holes to the sides and then countersink them. All the pieces are cut and ready for assembly. Here's what it will look like assembled. The claw is held to the base with screws. Trace out the outline of the claw onto the base and mark and drill pilot holes. Attach the base to the claws with wood screws. The original has a detail on the side. The detail piece has a hole drilled in it. The hole is filled with a plug. The plug also serves to cover the end of the bolt that holds the thumb. The detail piece can be made from scrap. Sketch the shape of the detail piece on the scrap wood. Cut out the detail piece and bevel the edges. A router works best. The cap is just a scrap piece of plastic. I don't even know where it came from, but it does the job. Drill a hole in the detail piece and glue the plug in place. Attach the detail piece to the claw with a lag bolt. The protruding head of the black bolt adds another detail. The claw is ready for sanding, filling, priming, and painting. The arm is made from 4 inch diameter flexible drain. Cut a 6 foot section for the arm. 
Wires, tubes, and conduits sticking out of the bottom of the arm add to the impression that the arm has been ripped from the body of a robot. Make a wiring harness by attaching the wires to a block of wood cut to fit the inside diameter of the flexible drain, about 4 inches. Slide the wiring harness into the drain. A screw holds the wiring harness in place. Screw right through the side of the flexible drain and into the wooden block. The claw is also held into the arm with a screw. Cut a second block of wood that will fit inside the flexible drain. Pilot a 1 8 inch hole through the center of the base plate. Fasten the claw to the block of wood with a single screw. Slide the claw assembly into the arm. Secure the claw assembly to the arm with a screw. The thumb can be centered in the claw by using a 1 quarter inch piece of tubing over the bolt. You have now completed the basic Robo Brain claw. An optional step is to motorize the claw. To move the thumb back and forth, the motor's circular motion is translated into a linear motion. If you choose to motorize your claw, you'll need some additional bill material items. The motor used is the Tamiya model 72007 4 speed high powered gearbox. It is relatively inexpensive, compact, and readily available. The motor is mounted to the bottom of the base plate. Remove the base plate from the claw assembly. Place the motor in the center of the base plate and mark its outline with a pencil. A slot will need to be cut in the base plate to allow for the connecting rod between the motor and the thumb. Start by drilling a 1 half inch hole through the base plate as shown. Drill a second hole. The slot gets cut out between the two holes. Mark it with a pencil and cut it out with a jigsaw. Four quarter inch holes, countersunk, need to be drilled through the base plate and through the one inch thick disc. Use four one quarter twenty by five inch machine screws to secure the wooden disc below the motor. Fasten the battery pack to the bottom of the disc. The wiring layout is simple. Here is the assembled motor, battery pack, wiring, and linkage. Thank you for watching.